Southington High School. My name is Jalisa Vincent, and you can sit with me. In this episode, Maddie and I discuss finding ways to cope and dealing with our own mental health. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of You Can Sit With Me. I am your fabulous host, Jaleesa Vincent, and with me, I have the wonderful Maddie Lucanic. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Jaleesa. <laughs> Maddie <laughs> is a junior at Southington High School, and most importantly, one of my very good friends. Thanks. <laughs> so, <laughs> Maddie... Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Maddie. I am 16. I play cello for the orchestra at SHS. I play piano, I sing, and most importantly, I write songs. And songwriting is my passion in life. And that is really what has helped me cope with a lot of different stuff and what has really motivated me to keep going when there's dark times. And um, so today I just wanted to stop in and talk a little bit about how songwriting can boost your mental health and as well as all different types of arts. Thank you so much, Maddie, for being here today. It sounds like music is very important to you and we'll get into your songwriting in just a bit. But first, tell me, when did you first get into music? Um, I have been around music my entire life. My parents have surrounded me with it since I was really little. We have videos of me dancing to Billie Holiday and Ella Aww. Fitzgerald in the living room and singing Disney princess songs and all kinds of stuff. And um, the first time I realized I wanted to play music, we would visit my grandmother's house a lot. And she had this small upright piano and I begged my parents for years like hey I really want to play piano so then when I was seven I had my first piano lesson and I was actually so short that I had to sit on a dictionary to reach the keys <laughs> <laughs> um so I have been playing piano since I was seven and then in ninth grade we were having the petting zoo for different instruments for lessons at school. And me and my mom had a conversation beforehand, like, you already play piano. You don't really need to start another instrument. Like, just go to the thing because it's you got to go to the thing for music class at school and just try a few instruments. But we're just going to stick with the piano. I was like, yeah, OK, that makes sense. So I tried I tried the tuba. Um, <laughs> so that was <laughs> and I tried the upright bass, but I was unfortunately too, too short. short. <laughs> things. Yep. And I tried the violin. I was like, oh, that's kind of squeaky for me. And then I was pretty much all the way through my whole petting zoo experience. <laughs> and my teacher was like, hey, why don't you try the cello? And I sat down. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll do this one more and then I'll go home and play piano. And I fell in love. And the the notes and the range that it has was just so beautiful to me. And I found it so calming how even if you messed up horribly, it still didn't sound horrible. Yeah. And so imagine my mom's surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I said <laughs> so I've been cello since fourth grade. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then in sixth grade, I tried out for swing choir and drama club because I was like, you know, I got to get involved with something. I got to do a club or something. And I was like, hey, I'm not too bad at this whole singing thing. And so I started taking voice lessons. So since then, I've been juggling piano, cello, and singing. And it was also during middle school that my um, music taste expanded. Uh, you know, every kid listens to bubblegum pop and Disney music yeah. and kids bop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
I Kids Bop. Oh my god, wait, I just realized you said Kids Bop. I did not listen to Kids Bop to clarify. <laughs> um just as a, just so everybody knows, I listen to Kids Bop. Thank you very much. Um <laughs> so but anyways, I was at Target with my mom one day. We were just shopping around and I saw this t-shirt and it said Johnny Cash on it. And I was like, hey mom, that's a cool t-shirt. And she was like, uh, yeah, you're not wearing that because you can't wear the shirt if you don't listen to the band. And I was <laughs> like, all right, that's a, that's a fair enough rule, but I really want this shirt. So I'm going to listen to him. And she was like, okay, suit yourself. So I bought the shirt. And I was like, all right, let's give this guy a try. And I immediately fell in love with his music. And I, I've i never been a huge country fan, but something about his songwriting and the way he tells a story with his words and his emotions, um, I don't know, I just really fell in love with his music. And over the years, my taste expanded even more. I started listening to rock, like The Rolling Stones, The Doors, Led Zeppelin, and I even expanded into heavy metal and <laughs> alternative metal, um, Metallica, Korn, Iron Maiden. So definitely have an eclectic taste in music. I'll listen to pretty much anything except kids pop. And, <laughs> um, so then I was expanding my music taste. I was juggling all the instruments. And I was like, you know, there's still something missing. You know, I don't really... I, I love my I love music. I love playing on these instruments and everything, but there's something missing. And uh, since the beginning of middle school, I had been writing poetry. I entered it in young author contests. I submitted it as work for language arts. And one day I was sitting at the piano, like fooling around, and I realized like, hey, this could be a song. And so ever since eighth grade, I have been writing songs. And that's pretty much caught up oh, to now. Well, that's great. I'm so happy that you've had music around you your entire life and you expanded your music taste except for Kids Bop, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to be a little faulty about that for the cut. rest of this interview, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I guess you're not invited to my Kids Bop themed birthday party. Um, <laughs> that's harsh. Uh, <laughs> you are a songwriter. I'm going to say it. You are a songwriter and yeah. your music is uh, amazing. I, I mean, I've heard some of it before and I'm telling you, it's absolutely amazing. Um, or sell me. <laughs> can you tell me what your music is about? Like what, what's your inspiration for new songs? Um, kind of the same as how my poetry worked. My songwriting journal is a diary. You know, it's, I have a bad day or a really good day and I sit down and I just write and I just let it all out. And sometimes I can make a song right from there. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, what a mess. And I spend hours sorting through it and coming up with better lyrics. But um, yeah, I've filled, I think, two and a half books already with just- Oh, wow all the lyrics you could think of. And the inspiration comes from different places. It obviously, a lot of it, um, as most songwriters are, a lot of it comes from pain and uh, sadness and loss and a lot of the things that we all cope with on a daily basis. And some of it is stupid. I'll read a book or I'll watch a TV show and I'll say like, wow, that was a dramatic breakup. Let's write a song. So. <laughs> It all stems from a lot of different places. I know a lot of us, whether big or small, are dealing with something. I mean, just the other day, I was so stressed about the semester ending and grades closing and all the tests that I need to study for. So, Maddie, tell me, what are you coping with when you go to write your songs and poems? What is on your mind? What are you feeling? Um... I mean, I'm a teenager, so I'm dealing with the <laughs> stuff that all the other teenagers are dealing with. You know, yeah. there's the recent election, the pandemic, the quarantine, um, school, and just our futures in general. You know, we have a lot ahead of us, and a lot of that weighs down heavily on our mental health. Yeah, and I mean, right now, too, there's such a huge stigma about men mental health, too, and 
not many people are comfortable or even want to talk about it at all, like not even in school with their friends, with their family. So having this conversation with you, I think would is a great way to kind of, you know, like get rid of that stigma. Yeah, I mean, releasing emotions and talking about how I feel has been something that I've struggled with my whole life. You know, I'm a generally happy and positive person. So when I was faced with tough emotions and tough times, I was kind of like, well, what do I do with this? And I feel like it was hard for me to realize that a lot of other people go through that same exact thing. And then once I started songwriting, it just kind of was such an easy way to let go of all of that stuff and to really realize like, hey, this is normal. And um, there's tons of ways to help you deal with this and you're not alone. Do you find it easier to write songs that are more personal or emotional to you? Or does it just come naturally? Can you write a song about like anything? Or do you feel that like songs that have a deeper meaning are less challenging to write because you're basically pouring your heart out? Yeah, I mean, I could write a song about anything, but it wouldn't (laughs) be great because it's not something that I've dealt with personally before. So obviously like the songs that are most personal to me and the ones that are from the roughest of times and the saddest of emotions or the happiest, um, those are the ones that are really deep and really hit hard for me. But that being said, as a songwriter, you also have to be able to put your music out there. So while those songs are a little easier to write, it's a lot harder to play those for people and to perform them because you're kind of pretty, as you said, you're pouring your heart out. And it's different when I go on stage in front of an audience and sing a cover of a song, because even though I can feel an emotional connection to that song, it's someone else's words, you know? It's a lot different when it's your own words. For, I guess, a year now, we've all been dealing with the difficulties of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I mean, quarantine for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people, was really hard. Missing birthdays, prom, graduation, not being able to see family and friends, it it really took a toll on a lot of people. And we had to find ways to cope. I mean, I started <laughs> baking, you know, like cakes and cookies. And I, I started, I, I did, I, I made like these little like chocolate chip cookies with my brothers this one time. It was really cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I also like, I, the ever so reliable Netflix, I think <laughs> I binged like five different yeah. shows and like finished it in a span of like a month. <laughs> um, do you ever, Did you find yourself writing more often during quarantine or is it like harder to write during those unprecedented times? Um, absolutely way easier to write during quarantine. If <laughs> quarantine brought anything good to the table, it was songwriting because before, you know, with juggling school and music lessons and clubs and activities, like, there wasn't tons of time to write, you know, even now, even though we're still kind of in quarantine, there's, it's a lot harder. And to have that time over the summer, I mean, obviously it's unbearable to be (laughs) locked in your room (laughs) 24 seven, doing absolutely nothing, talking to no one, you know? Um, But that really gave me a push in the right direction. And I wrote so much. I was writing 24 seven, I was obviously alone with all my thoughts, so there was tons of different inspiration from those binged Netflix shows, the (laughs) um, movies, uh, even the current events that were happening and the pandemic itself, just tons of inspiration. And obviously, not everything that I write is good, probably about 10% of it, but (laughs) I did write a ton. I probably wrote over 20 songs and over 40 poems. Wow. (laughs) Maddie, do you think you can recite a few of your poems right now? I think I could, yeah. So this poem is called Barbie Dolls, and it's about 
you know, drifting off from friends or relatives that kind of, um, that kind of become someone else that you don't really want to be, you know, it's about being separated from what's considered popular or right by society's standards and trying to find a way to accept yourself as being different. Soft, shiny hair, sparkling blue eyes, shimmering smile, a perfect face, a perfect body. Is it worth it? Are you happy now? Now you fit into the crowd. I cannot see a difference, rows and rows of Barbie dolls. Pretty clothes, pretty smile, but you don't have a choice, do you? You must be happy now, smile wider, do not stop. How does it feel to harden? to become something unbreakable, to trade your happiness for plastic, plastic skin, plastic heart. Barbies cannot cry, no emotions behind sapphire eyes, an empty shell of someone I knew. Do you recognize me, old friend? I'm not like you anymore. I have bruises and cuts, scars, markings, burns, but it's okay, it helps me feel. I can be fragile, breakable, but I won't be just another doll. Look around you. Does anyone stand out anymore? Perfect hair, perfect eyes, perfect smile, perfect little Barbie dolls. I hope you're happy now. What was the inspiration for that poem? What does it mean to you? Um, you know, every teenager experiences some type of uh, distance from friends, you know, everyone grows up, everyone changes, and sometimes some people don't change, you know, I always found myself, um, staying true to who I am, you know, I was never one to try to bend to what society wanted me to be, and I feel like through elementary school and middle school and high school, I obviously have matured and grown up, but I think my core values and my personality has pretty much stayed the same. So it's kind of that outside perspective, you know, watching everyone around you find different versions of themselves that you just don't fit in with. And um, I kind of struggled for a little while, you know, like maybe I should be changing. Maybe I should uh, try to fit in with them more, but you can't really force what's not meant to be. So this is kind of about me accepting that and kind of commenting on what people do and uh, act and how they act as they grow. Um, this next poem is called Control. And this poem is kind of why I'm here today. You know, it's really about struggles with mental health and trying to accept these negative emotions and these hard feelings that we can't avoid, you know, and how some people like me try to avoid those feelings. But in the end, you know, that's not really, so, that's what life is. You got to take the ups and the downs. Burning sensations spread through my face, a tingle in my nose and my eyes. Vision blurring, jaw trembling. I told myself I wouldn't cry. I don't know why, but it feels wrong to let my constant smile fade. How can I make you happy if I don't feel the same? For days, weeks, months, I never rest. I hold back every single tear. I repress every fleeting worry, every sorrow, every fear. It builds and builds and builds until my tank is all filled up and then I cannot help it when I finally erupt. It always feels so overwhelming to lose all my control. I feel so small and weak, I hate to be exposed. Crying isn't natural, I don't feel like myself. When all the tears come streaming out, I'm positive it's someone else. I don't know why I feel this way, this constant craving for restraint. Why can't I just let it out? Everyone feels pain. But I suppress and hide and balance all the things that make me real. I just want to be happy. I don't want to feel. I told myself I wouldn't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. A line that really stood out to me was those last few words, I, I told myself I wouldn't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Can you explain those lines in depth? Uh, yeah, it's kind of when I was younger, you know, I 
as I said earlier, I really struggled with the negative emotions that I had and I struggled with releasing those. I felt this constant need for control. And that's kind of like a mantra that I used to repeat to myself, you know, because to me, crying was a weakness, you know, that was showing someone that you're vulnerable and that you can be affected by different problems and different emotions. But through the years I've learned, like crying is not just weakness, it's strength. Because to let someone see that side of you and to let someone see those vulnerable emotions and to open yourself up like that, that is something that takes a lot of guts and a lot of strength because it's something that I've had to work on for years and I'm still not comfortable, you know, letting a lot of those things go because I use songwriting and um, and music itself as a way to release those emotions. And I think a lot of people struggle with that um, that fight for control over your emotions. And I've definitely learned over the years that it's something you can't really control. It's something that you gotta accept and release. This song is called Beautiful. And it's a song I wrote when someone in my life was feeling pretty down about themselves and pretty having a pretty rough time. And I sat down and I was, you know, I was really upset because it really sucks to see people that you love in your life have that difficulty and struggle with those feelings. And so I just sat down and I poured out what I was feeling about the situation and this song came out. And I think this is really important with the message that I'm trying to spread today. Um, Just a little bit of positivity for your day. I see you check the mirror every morning when you wake I see the doubt that clouds your eyes and every step you take You don't need to hide your pain, I see right through your mask You are obviously a very talented writer and singer. 
So, <laughs> so I guess why songwriting? Why do you see writing as a good way to cope? Um, that's a good question. And <laughs> it's one that I don't know if I could answer, you know, completely straightforward. I, as I've said, I love music and I've been surrounded with it all my life. It's been a part of my life for so long. And music has always been a way, you know, it's, it's fun to listen to and you could dance to it. You could sing along with your friends, but the deepest music, like when I fell in love with Johnny Cash and I really sat down and listened to his lyrics, the best songwriters and singers, they write about something that they've experienced, but that tons of other people have experienced as well. And I just think it's so incredibly inspiring to be able to sit down and write a song that other people can relate to and that other people can learn from. And so if I have the opportunity to write down my emotions and my experiences and my battles with, um, with sadness and loss and whatever else it is, then I'm definitely going to take that opportunity because I think it's really important for people to realize that they are not alone in this struggle and they are not weak for feeling sad um, and that it's normal to it's normal to feel like that, you know? Now, Maddie, I go to SHS. You go to SHS. Yes, I do. Do you know what the SHS vision of a graduate is? I know, Jaleesa. I don't know what the vision of the SHS <laughs> graduate is. <laughs> what I'm is not it? too sure. <laughs> I'm not too sure that a lot of our listeners are familiar with it as well. But essentially, Southington High School created sort of like a mission statement of what a student should be after graduating from Southington High School. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Straight from the handbook, a graduate of the Southington Public Schools will be college ready or career ready and prepared for life beyond mastering the knowledge and demonstrating the skills to communicate effectively, think creatively and critically, and contribute to the global community. So, Maddie, do you think you are the vision of the SHS graduate? <laughs> wow, Jaleesa, you know, after hearing all of that, that inspiring vision, I'm going to have to, to put it bluntly, I'm going to have to say no. I mean, okay, who is, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's a lot, you know, to be fully prepared for a career, for a future, for um for the rest of your life like yeah for the rest of your life that's a I, really yeah. high standard to ask a graduate somebody to coming yeah. out of high school it's a heavy for life. Life. and I I don't know I don't feel like anyone is ever truly prepared for life I I know adults that are not prepared for life and I think that's what makes life so exciting and so great is that there's always the possibility for something totally unexpected to happen. I am I I'm totally ready for a career, right? I know what I want to do and I know like songwriting is it for me. And um, if I can't be a songwriter, I could always work in the music industry, but I know that music is my passion and that's what I love. And so absolutely I'm ready for that part of my life. But to say that I'm ready for life, I can't say it, you know? Yeah, because, I, I, I completely agree. Um, I don't think anybody at that stage is really ready for anything, really. I I mean, I do understand, like, maybe college ready, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe career ready. But I think being prepared for life is something that is, for lack of better words, lifelong. <laughs> you yeah. know, I... Also, someone that can't cook more than like mac and cheese probably. <laughs> 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 um, 
But yeah, I firmly believe that in every person, there is always room to improve and to become a better human being. And um, that's a whole part of it too, is that as someone who is very emotional and um, really in touch with their emotions, um, haven't always been, but I'm getting there. And I feel like there's always some area of your life that you can improve, you know? And that's kind of sad to think about that you'll never have that perfect life. But I think if I was ready for to live the rest of my life right now, what would be the excitement of it? You know, what would be the fun in that? There, there is none because (laughs) you know, would know you'd say, Hey, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to be a songwriter. I'm going to write tons of excuse me, (laughs) successful songs and going to get married, have kids and have the perfect life that I'm sorry, that's kind of boring to me, you know, because I like I like the unexpectedness of what's going to happen next. And I obviously everyone likes to have some type of plan, but I think the best way to live life is day by day and kind of exploring different parts of yourself and different parts of your relationships with people and the connections that you make and the experiences that you have. So as someone who used to dwell on the past and the future, um, let me tell you, like, it's so much better to live in the present. For our final question today, tell me, what is one thing you wish people knew about you? Um, wow, that's a heavy question also. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a very outgoing person whatsoever. I've always found it hard to talk to people, as we know, since I talk to a songwriting journal most of the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously there's probably tons of people at this school who are like, Maddie Lucanic, who's that, you know? And I don't mind it that way. I don't feel the need to have tons of relationships in my life, you know? But I want people to know that I am someone who believes really strongly in living with empathy and sympathy in your life um, because I think without that knowledge of what other people are going through and that knowledge that even if you're struggling with something, there are thousands of other people going through the same exact stuff. I think that you'll live a pretty lonely life. You know, you got to understand the emotions that everyone else feels and be able to connect that to your emotions. Because if I didn't have that connection to other people and if I didn't realize like, hey, you're not alone in this. There are tons of other people who are sad and who are stressed. I feel like I would be so alone, you know? And I also want people to know, like, just as much as there are tons of people that connect with you, there are tons of people that also feel that same anxiety about getting rid of those emotions and pushing them down and not showing anybody that vulnerable part of yourself. And it's taken me a while, you know, and I'm lucky to have learned this lesson this early in my life because there's still so much left and a lot of people might not learn it ever. And so it's really important for me to come in today and say it's okay not to be okay because all through my childhood, I struggled with, hey, Maddie, you should probably be happy right now. Um, Like, smile and don't cry and don't show anyone that weaker part of you. And I think that repression of those feelings is something that can weigh down upon people so heavily without them knowing. And eventually there's a breaking point. And I am fortunate enough to have reached that breaking point and it is so much better. I live my life so much more clearly and so much more effortlessly 
because I have found that way for me to cope with those emotions and because I've found that way to accept those parts of me. And obviously I'm not telling everyone to go out and be a songwriter, you know? There are plenty of ways to cope with those emotions. There's art, there's dance, there's sports, there's exercise, there's just talking to your friends if you feel comfortable with that. And I think that if anyone's going to take anything away from this whole interview and this whole podcast, it's just like you're not alone and it's definitely okay to cry and to let out your anger and to scream and yell and punch things not other people. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I just wanted everyone to know, like, I'm here and I hear you and I know how you're feeling. And if you need a friend, I'm at SHS. And I mean, you might not know what I look like, but um, (laughs) come down to the band room, say hi, come to music club, um, join a club, there's always <laughs> there's always people around you that can relate to how you're feeling and that can sympathize and empathize with how you're feeling and i think it's really important for you to know that thank you so much maddie for taking the time today and having this conversation with me and remind me to send you my kids bop playlist please. Um, I'm going to convert you into a kids pop fan by the end of this year. It's my goal. (laughs) Do they do heavy metal covers? (laughs) We'll find out. (laughs) (laughs) Southington High School So You Can Sit With Me is produced by students and faculty of Southington High School. A special thank you goes to Southington Public Schools Coalition for Social Justice. I'm Jaleesa Benson, and thank you for listening. And remember, there's always a seat open for you.